Sebastian here again. Today's art project is going to be on medieval castles. We're going to learn a little bit about them and then we're going to make our own 3D representation of a castle. All right, today we're going to be talking about medieval castles and keeps. No, not this awesome Disney castle that we have here. Instead, we're going to be talking about those castles that were around between 476 AD in 1453 AD. So castles had many similar parts. They had uh, round towers, also known as turrets. They had inner and outer walls, inner and outer gates, great place for trapping your enemies. A lot of them had moats, although not all of them did. Since there was not a strong central government, warfare was frequent, and as a result, most nobles built their own fortified manor houses. The first castles were made on mounds of dirt with logs, but by 1100 AD, most castles had defensive structures like turrets and moats. Um, some of their defensive structures included clockwise stairwells. Most knights were right-handed, so as they were descending down on the enemy who might be spiraling up to attack, they had the clear advantage in those battles. The blocks were made of smooth stone. It helped to prevent them from being scaled. Uh, usually when uh, you went into the main entry, there would be three to four holes in the wall and they would drop things like hot tar, water, oil onto the would-be attackers here through these representations of castles through the ages going from left to right top to bottom how the castles started off being much more simpler and they grew in size and complexity here's an actual castle that you can see has a more simpler construction more complex bigger and a combination of the two um, whole towns and cities would uh, actually grow around these castles. Usually the peasants were, or the merchant class would be living outside of the castle walls. Um, and they, of course, would provide things for the people who lived in the castle, the noblemen. Um, and in turn, they would get protection. So if they were invaded by enemies, then the people could flood inside the castle walls for protection. Here's a representation of what we're going to be doing. It's a simple square or rectangle walled um, castle where it's going to have four towers, one at each corner. All right, things that you'll need for this lesson include um, paper. You'll probably need at least two sheets, maybe three. You'll need pencil. You'll need tape or glue. Um, either one will be fine. You might even get by using a stapler in some areas. You'll need scissors and you'll need markers. Our first step is going to be taking one of our pieces of paper and we are going to do the square. So we're gonna take the top corner, fold it down, and then this section right here is what we're gonna cut off. Then we're gonna open it back up. And now I'm gonna fold it in half this way, top to bottom. Fold it in half going the other direction, left to right. Now when I open it up, I have a plus sign increases and a diagonal line. We're gonna ignore the diagonal line and we're gonna cut just this bottom half line that's vertical going straight up and down. And we're only going to cut right to the middle point. So we're only doing this bottom section here. Next, <clears throat> you could use glue, possibly stapler, um, or you could even use tape. And we're going to bring and slide one area over the other but I'm not going to glue it down or tape it down or whatever yet because I want to decorate this. So this is going to be the backdrop, like the hills, mountains, skies, whatever, in my castle's background. And then this part's going to be the grass area. So I'm going to go ahead 
um, and I'm going to decorate that. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little moat that will surround my castle on the outside edge here. So I'm just making a ring. Doesn't have to look perfectly round because this is a natural man-made kind of uh, river here going around. Then um, in the background, uh, I know that this is the line here. I know it's a little hard to see on the camera, but that is the crease line going across my paper. So I'm going to do, um, maybe we'll have some rolling hills that will go by. So we'll have some rolling hills. Uh, maybe there'll be some more hills. Maybe in the distance there will be some castles. So my, um, some mountains, I mean. And um, <clears throat> so here, I am going to, uh, my little trick for doing mountains is to do a crazy zigzag line and then bring some of these lines down, keep some of them uh, in front of others. There we go. Maybe mine will have some snow on top of the mountains. Maybe I'll have some puffy clouds in the background. Maybe there'll be a sun. It's medieval time, so you probably wouldn't see an airplane flying by. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to color this in. done with that I can fold it over you might want to crease this down first there that'll make a more crisp environment here as this overlaps and I'm gonna also crease it down here there we go so it stands up nicely and you can use the stapler or glue the top to the bottom one I'm just gonna use two pieces of tape Hold that down, <clears throat> and there is my 3D environment for my castle. So let's make the castle. All right, I have another piece of paper here, and we're gonna need to draw some basic shapes in order to make the forms that will go to make up our castle. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold my paper in half twice, because I want four towers to go on my castle. So I know that I am going to need four rectangles. So I am going to do a rectangle like so. And that is going to be how tall my tower is going to be. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. Keep that paper, we're gonna use it for uh, other parts of our castle. And if you want to decorate your castles before you put them together, that's probably a good idea. So I don't know exactly what part is going to be overlapped when I make my cylinder form, 
like so. So I'm just going to maybe put a couple windows. Maybe this part right here might be overlapped so we wouldn't see that. And then I'm gonna do some lines that will become the bricks that make up my castle wall. And when I do this, I like to stagger the lines. So if I do one row like this, the next row will be here and the next row underneath it will be like that. I think that gives it a real stonework kind of look and feel, masonry. And I'm gonna do that with the other uh, three pieces that we have. So we do need to um, add a couple of tabs to be able to tape it down or glue it down. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little snip here, here, maybe here. And now when I fold this over like this, I can also flare out one of those tabs. So if I feel like the tab is too fat, maybe I'll go back and I'll just make it a little skinnier. And so maybe if I just need one area uh, to tape down, I might uh, cut all of these rust off. So you can see here now how I've cut the rust off and I just have the one. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my tape because that's what I have. And I want that to go over like that. Take my tape, pull it down. And then take my tape, take that down, and then I'm going to place it where I want it to be. All right, I'm going to do that with the other ones and tape them in. to make four tops for those. So we're gonna make them into cones. So we're gonna make some circles. And again, we need four of them. So I'm gonna leave my paper folded up twice. I'm gonna cut out four circles for the tops of my towers. And then to make it into a cone shape, you take one of those, cut to the middle, that would be for the circle's diameter. And then we're going to take that and we're gonna kind of have it overlap too. And when we do that, it's gonna give us a little cone that we can put on top of our castles. I'm gonna get some tape and you can color those first if you want to do that before. And I have a little bit of tape overhanging here. So that's what I'm gonna to use to attach it onto the side of the column there. If I don't have quite enough to do that, I'll add a little bit extra. And then I'm gonna put it to the inside where it won't be as noticeable. And if you wind up needing to put a little bit on the other side too to make it stay, you can. So I'm just gonna take a little bit here 
And if you had paper and glue, you could just make it so it attaches that way as well. And so there is my first tower with the cone on top. And now I'm gonna do that with the other three. So now we need to do some connecting walls um, and that's going to add extra stability to our towers and just judging by the way it looks here it looks like I can just cut this out and I think that's going to be just fine with our leftover so I'm going to actually leave that crease in the middle I'm gonna fold one here. I'm gonna fold the other one inward so that it makes a nice cube. If you wanna cut out the little key shape that you see at a lot of them uh, castles up at the top, I'm gonna to keep it all folded up here so I can do them all at one time. I'm just gonna cut out little notches here. When I open it up, I have that all set up. So now I'm going to, if you want to have um, a little space at the bottom of each to uh, tape them down, you can do that too. So remember how we made the little notches? And then we cut out a section. That'll give you that tab. So now I um, can also decorate that before I put it down as well. If I want to add all that masonry again. So now I'm ready to go ahead and uh, tape that in. So I'm going to tape it down to the bottom as well as to itself. So I'm going to put these two edges together, put a piece of tape and put it down. I, I can do this inward, but I think for me, since my castle's kind of small, I'm just going to do it outward. And then I'm going to put it in the middle here. Oh, what about a drawbridge? I think I want a drawbridge. So I changed my design. So I am going to uh, let this drawbridge, instead of going down, maybe my drawbridge will go up. So you can see how that will flip up and down. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my tape, or again, you can glue the bottom of the tabs. Put it here in the middle. I'm gonna put a piece of tape, or again, you can just glue the side to the corners.
and there goes our little miniature castle. And if you made one of the uh, dragons from earlier this week, think about all the puppet play you could have with the dragon. You could make little guys. If you have Legos, they could be a part of this environment. And if you watch the animation art video, then you might even make your own movie from it. All right, there you go. Oh, I hope you enjoyed doing that project as much as I enjoyed teaching it. So today, we're gonna to be having an interesting fact in just a moment from the medieval times. But I do wanna remind you, as always, be kind to people, love on your family, and keep on making great art. For today's interesting fact of the day, we're gonna be talking about cemeteries in medieval times. So where did people like to go for fun in town? Try the cemetery. In the Middle Ages or medieval times, cemeteries could be the social hub of the community, hosting theater performances, local elections, trials, and lots more. They were also a place of business. Shops and cemeteries were exempt from taxes, by the way. <laughs>